great detective will always examine the scene of the crime for clues and try to deduce from these clues theories that will help her in tracking down the criminal. What's deduce mean? Deduce means work out. If you see smoke, you can deduce that there's a fire nearby. And if you find a banana peel lying on the ground, you can deduce that Jane is not far away. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Come on. Let's go and see Spider. Yes, you're right. Let's go. Deduce from this cigar stombie. That you'll get a horrible disease from all the germs on it. A great detective is not worried about catching horrible diseases. She looks at the clue through her magnifying I glass. A great detective sees that the criminal who left this clue at the scene of the crime has large wet lips. Ayanda, I don't what else can we deduce from this? Ayanda. A great detective's mind is high. The man who smoked the cigar likes to think he is richer than he really is. And why does she think that, my dear? Because really rich people don't smoke their cigars down so far. They throw them away before... Frankie, hmm? who's standing behind me? Someone with large wet lips. <gasps> I thought so. Mr. Agriba! Where is she? Where is who, Mr. Agrippa? Oh, Ayanda. He wants to know where Spider is. She's not in her web. She's out somewhere, is she? Looking for a nice, juicy fly to gobble up, eh? Huh. Well, let me tell you something. She's keeping me waiting. Wasting my time. Wasting my money. Where is she? Somebody say my name. Aha! It's my little spidery friend. I've been waiting for you to scuttle out of whatever dark little corner you've been hiding in. Here, take this, my dear. What is it? Sign. Here. What for? It's an eviction notice, Spider. I'm not signing an eviction notice. <laughs> Oh, sign it or not, my dear little eight-legged friend. That notice tells you that you have until Sunday to get out of here. Understand? And the same goes for you, you old bag of bones. And then, once I'm rid of the two of you, I can really do something... something uh, creative with this place. Mr. Agrippa! Sunday, do you hear? He left his pen behind. I should give it back, I suppose. Let's have a look at that eviction notice. He gave me one too. Official eviction notice. That's written in ink. Must vacate the premises on Avatar Lane, known as Bamji's Warehouse, by noon on Sunday the 12th. That's also written in. If said spider does not vacate the premises, legal proceedings will be instituted at once. Who's said spider? It just means that if spider doesn't leave by Sunday, she'll probably go to jail. Oh. Mine says the same too. What are you going to do, Mama Bones? I'm going to look for a fresh place to put my stove. Uh -uh. No, 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 Mama Bones. We have to fight back. Well, I don't think it's fair, even if it is the law. But even if it's unfair, like Mama Bones said, there's nothing we can do about it. Hey, whose is this? Hmm? It's not ours. Then we'd leave it lying out here. Mal, no. Oh, come, come. Let's go, Oscar. No, I'm sorry. I've never seen it before. 
I don't think it belongs to anyone who lives up here. Anyway, it's not important. What's important is that Spider and Mama Bones have to move. Yes, <gasps> they called her the Sad Spider. Perhaps they meant to write the Sad Spider because they knew she would be sad at having to leave her place. Very sad. Oh. We all will be. Well, there must be something that can be done about it. Oh, Jay, mm -hmm. won't you run outside and bring the washing in for me? I've got to iron all your school clothes for Monday. Sure, ma'am. Okay. Ma? Huh? Where'd you hang up the clothes? On the van, wait a minute. What do you think? Well, there aren't any clothes hanging on the line. What do you mean? <gasps> it's gone! All my washing is gone! It's been stolen! The jacket must belong to the thief. And look, in the vegetable bed. See? It's a footprint. I know who did it. It was Bra Joe. Remember we saw him down the street outside Spider's place? He had a big bag over his shoulder. The bag must have been filled with all your washing. But why would he leave his jacket behind? Because one of the things on the line was your father's jacket. A much nicer one than the thing he left behind. And Bra Joe looked suspicious. Don't you remember? Yes. Hmm. Ayanda, it doesn't take a great detective to realize that Bra Joe's the thief. <laughs> What are we going to do, Dada? You mean about the skeleton who stole my jacket? And the children's school clothes? And my skirt? Well, I've reported it to the police. What else can we do? What are they going to do about the theft of old clothes, huh? Nothing. But we know who did it. We do? Of course, Brajo did it. The children saw him with my washing. I thought they just saw him with a bag over his shoulder. Yes, Dada. But my washing was in his bag. How can you be so sure? Close examination of the contents of pockets can tell you a lot about the person who owns it. <sighs> Ballpoint pen stains. <clears throat> and what's this? What are you doing? I'm trying to work out who this jacket belongs to. It belongs to Broad Joe. Maybe. Ayanda, everyone knows he's the thief. Maybe. Ayanda! Now this pen means something. I have called this meeting to tell you what I have found out about the man who stole the clothes off our washing line yesterday. But we all know everything there is to know about the thief. It's Broad Joe. We mm. all know that this jacket belongs to the thief, right? Well, I have found out some things about the person who owns this jacket. What did you find? His ID book? No! Things are never that simple. But if you're a great detective... Mm. She's trying to be a great detective. If you're a great detective, you can learn as much as you could from an ID book. There are hundreds of clues you can get that will help you find the person you're after. What's that? Looks like an ink stain. It is a ballpoint ink stain. And look at this. I found it in the other pocket. A ballpoint pen. So what? What does that prove? Next, I turned out all the pockets and looked at the stuff stuck in the seams. Here, I kept it in an envelope. It's just a lot of dust. What can you deduce from that? You're joking, aren't you, Ayanda? No, I'm not. I'm being serious. This is exactly what good detectives do. They look at dust like this through a magnifying glass. Come and have a look, Spider. <laughs> what do you see? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I know. Uh, there's some little bits of tobacco. Exactly. Uh, and some little pieces that are... <laughs> snuff. Little grains of snuff. <coughs> That's what they are. Precisely. Yes, but where is this getting us, Ayanda? Let's see how much you can deduce about the person who owns this coat. Hmm, it's quite a big person. I know, he smokes. Shh. 
and take snuff. If he's got an ink stain on the lining of his jacket, what can we tell about him? If he uses a pen, he must be able to read and write. And we know what size his shoes are. Now let's think about Brajo. But Brajo doesn't smoke. And I've never seen him take snuff. And Brajo can't read or write. So what's he doing with a pen in his pocket? Or ink stains on the lining of his jacket? And Brajo's not all that big. If the jacket's meant for a big man, then it would be very loose on him. What about his shoes? We don't know what's, what the soles of his shoes look like. I don't know, Ayan. It could still be Brajo. Hmm, but all the evidence in this jacket... He could have borrowed the jacket from someone else who can read and write and who does take snuff. Hmm. We need to look at Brajo's shoes. Yeah, yeah. Where does Brajo normally hang out on a Saturday morning? I've seen him eating his breakfast under the bridge. Joe. Yeah? What do you want? We'd like to have a look at your shoes, please. My shoes? They... You, you can see them. We want to see underneath them. Why? Well, we've got a bet on whether there's a hole in your left right. right shoe or not. I say there is. Frankie says there isn't. You're laughing at me? Oh no, Brajo. Well? You look as much as you want. You seem a stupid sort of bet to me. It's the same pattern as the footprint in the soil. Brad Joe's the thief. Well, is there a hole or isn't there? There might be one, Brad Joe. We're just checking. We don't have to check anything. I told you so, Ayanda. What are you doing? I'll explain later. Hey! What are you doing to my shoe? N nothing, Brajo. Here you are. There wasn't a hole. So? Who won the bet? She did. One moment, dear Kitty Winkles. One moment of your time. And how are we all today? Hmm? <laughs> Spun another little web for yourself yet, Spider? Why don't you just leave her alone? Hmm. Oh, I will. I promise I will. Just as just as soon as she vacates premises that are not lawfully hers. But that is due to happen quite soon, isn't it? In fact, if my calculations are correct, you have uh, I think it's 26. No, no, 25. Yes, just 25 hours before you are out of here. Yes! Twenty-five hours. You won't forget, will you, my little furry spider? <laughs> Have any of you seen my pen? Uh, I seem to have mislaid it somewhere. It's a very expensive pen. I'd hate to lose it. I can't think where I'd put it down. We hope you find your pen, Mr. Agrippa! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Just something I saw in my book. What are you going to do with it? Compare it with the soil from Brajo's shoes. If Brajo was the thief, then some of the soil stuck to his shoe would be the soil from the vegetable bed out there, wouldn't it? I don't know. Would soil have stuck to his shoe? If it was damp, it would have. And it was damp. Mm. Because my father waters those beds every morning before he starts work. But soil, soil. What's the difference between soil in your garden and soil anywhere else? Listen to what the book says. Soils are made up of a number of mineral and organic constituents. What's that mean? Wait, it explains. In other words, it says... Soils are made of a wide variety of rocks, broken down into tiny fragments by the action of the weather, together with bits of dead plants and animals. Listen to this. 
Because soils from different places can be made up of very different mixtures of things, the great detective can often solve difficult cases by comparing soil samples. See, I told you. Now, if I pour the soil from the vegetable bed into a glass of water, the heavier bits should sink to the bottom and the lighter bits float on the top. Bits of dead beetles and tiny bits of wood and stuff like that. The book says that's all part of many kinds of soil. Some of the soil's sinking. And some staying on top. Look, there's a dead ant. More stays on top than sinks to the bottom. That's because my father puts a lot of compost in his vegetable bed. Um, what's compost made of? Mm, rotten grass and stuff like that and leaves, you know. Now, before we can see what the soil from Black Joe's shoe looks like, we have to crush it. Mm, it's a bit lumpy. The book says we can see whether two different soils are the same by comparing the way they feel. Well, they feel very different. And by comparing their colors. Look. Hmm. The soil from Broad Joe's shoe is gray. And the soil from the garden is darker. Now, for the water test. Okay. Most of it's sinking. It's all sinking. Just a bit of dust staying on top. There's no little sticks and insect wings and stuff in the soil. Yes, and it's a different color. Look, it's gray. The soil from the vegetable bed is dark. Hmm, well, what do you think? I think Brajo is not the person who stole the washing. Then what was he doing with that bag over his shoulder? Rod Joe's business, isn't it? Oh, well, I thought great detectives were meant to catch baddies, and you have not caught anyone. Maybe it's sometimes more important to find out who didn't do something than to find out who did. Part of great detective work is to eliminate all the theories that don't explain the facts. Then whatever's left must be the true answer. Then if Rod Joe isn't the thief, then who is? I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. But if we do find someone someday whose shoes are filled with soil like this, and who smokes cigarettes and takes snuff, and who wears a size 42 jacket and can read and write, then we'll know we've got the right buddy. Well, that's one mystery solved. But there's another one waiting. If you're talking about me and Mr. Agrippa, forget it. I'll think of something. I've already thought of something. It's something I saw in my book. What if those eviction notices weren't real? What if they were forged? Come on, Ayanda. Even if it was a forgery, we'd never be able to tell. Oh, yes, we would. It says right here what you can do to spot a forgery. Where's the eviction notice? Down at my place. Well, come on. What are we waiting for? Yeah, it's Anne. But I want to know how we're going to know whether Mr. Agrippa forged the eviction notice. By comparing the ink in his pen and the ink on the eviction notice. If it's the same ink, then we'll know you wrote them yourself. Frankie, hmm? read this bit of the book. Uh, from here? Yeah. Um, many inks are made up of mixtures of dyes. No two different kinds of ink are the same. Each is made up of different dyes. By separating the dyes in different inks, you can compare inks. So first you've got to dissolve the dyes in the ink? It says you use water or vinegar. Spider, I think there's an old bottle of vinegar somewhere around here. The book says uh, we'll also need some blotting paper. Oh, there's a big sheet of blotting paper in the office. Here we are. We'll need a cup or something to pour it into. And some water. And uh, Spider, uh, we will need the eviction notice and Mr. Agrippa's pen. Right. Mark a piece of absorbent paper with the inks you want to compare. Then hang the paper in a container with some vinegar solution as shown. There's a picture here. See? Until the solvent has soaked up through the paper. As the solvent moves through the ink samples, 
different dyes in the inks move up the paper with the solvent at different rates, leaving behind them a distinctive fingerprint made up of the different colored dyes in the ink. Here's Mr. Agrippa's pen. Make a mark at the bottom of the paper. How are we going to get a sample of the ink on the eviction notice onto the blotting paper? A great detective is never short of ideas. First, take a drop of water. You see? It dissolves some of the ink. Now we blot the ink with the blotting paper. There's not much ink on it. It should be enough. It says uh, we should mix a little vinegar with the water. Vinegar on its own is too strong. Hang the edge of the blotting paper in the solution so that it soaks it up. It's sucking it up. It's reached the ink blobs. If the ink on the eviction notice is the same ink as in Mr. Agrippa's pen, then we will know he filled it in. And if he filled it in, then it can't be a genuine official eviction notice. I bet he stole those forms in the first place and then wrote my name in and my address. Look, there's a yellow smudge and a blue one. And they're exactly the same from the two samples. Mr. Agrippa did write your name on the eviction notice. Hang on. I've just thought of something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this test is fair. We are comparing dried ink from the eviction notice and ink out of Mr. Agrippa's pen. I think we should be comparing the same sort of ink. So, draw a line on the eviction notice next to my name and then put some water on both. Mm -hmm. It won't separate as much because it's not blotting paper. It uh, doesn't matter. See what happens anyway. The yellow smudge. <gasps> and the blue one. They are the same, Ayanda. <laughs> so, I won't have to move after all. Uh, Mama Bones, what are you doing? Oh, it's my little banana boy. <laughs> no bananas for you today, my boy. Mama Bones has found a nice little place for herself behind the old bus shed. But Mama Bones... Oh, I am done. Um, don't worry about me. I've had to move before, and I'm sure I have to move again. It's just that this was such a nice place. Oh, with such nice neighbors. But Mama Bones, we don't have to move. I'm too old to fight an official eviction notice, Spider. That's just it, Mama Bones. It's not an official eviction notice. It's an unofficial eviction notice. Mm. Mr. Agrippa wrote it himself, and he's not allowed to do that. Oh, Mr. Agrippa? Mm. How do you know that? The great detective deduced it. And we can prove it, Mama Bones. We can. Spider doesn't have to leave, and you don't have to leave. Oh. <laughs> this is Bones. All packed up and ready to leave the old neighborhood, are you? Good. And Spider, got your little suitcases ready, have we? All set to go. Mr. Agrippa, we don't have to move. Oh, yes, you do. You've been evicted. No, they haven't. You forged those eviction notices. I did no such thing. Yes, you did. And the great detective can prove it. The detective? Yeah. The detective who compared the ink on the eviction notice with the ink in your pen, that's who? Yeah. The yeah. detective says the eviction notices were obvious forgery. And yes. he yeah. can prove it scientifically. Oh, well, listen, I'm sure the detective will understand when I tell him it was all just a practical joke. <laughs> yeah, Wena, it's no joke forcing people out of their homes. Oh, I've got to go. An appointment. Yeah, a busy man. <laughs> What shall we tell the detective? Tell him I've had to go on a long journey. Uh, out of town. Uh, I won't be back for a long time. What should he do with your pen? Oh, 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 tell him he can keep it. Uh, a gift from me to him. 
I've got to go. I, I might miss my, my, I might miss my train. Got to go, boys. I'm a busy man. He's a man with a plan to run away. That's what the gripper didn't say. The great detective is a okay. She'll never stop till she's head her way. What have you got there? You had a theft yesterday. Yes. I was down at the market this morning. The street market? Mm-hmm. You see this man trying to sell a whole lot of clothes to one of the stall holders. He's saying everything is second-hand stuff. I take a look at it. I think I recognize some of it. School uniforms. So I see. Hey, you steal the stuff or what? The man takes one look at me, and then he turns and runs. So, I pick up the clothes, stick them in my bag, and I come up here. They are yours, Andre? Yes, they are! Was this thief a big man, Rajo? Oh, yes. Quite big. And did he smoke? Smoke? Um... Oh, yes. Come to think of it, he did. And the funny thing is, he also took snuff. He was offering the guy in the market a pinch of snuff as I walked up. Then, he lit himself a cigarette as well. <gasps> I knew it! You knew the thief took snuff? And that he smoked. And that he could read and write. <laughs> but how? The great detective deduced it, of course. <laughs> to Spider's comic and video shop. Hey, this is all about us. It's all about Spider's play. Here's me. There's a comic, a video, and an audio cassette for each of our adventures. And we buy them from you? Sure. Or write to Handspring Trust at 1 Magnet Street, Kensington, Johannesburg, 2094. Hmm? Mm-hmm. 